Cornelis Mush. Cornelis Mush Rotterdam, 1592 or 1593. The Hague, 15 December 1650, was Griffier chief clerk of the States General of the Netherlands, the governing body of the Dutch Republic, from 1628 till the start of the first stadtholderless period. He was a byword for corruption in his lifetime. Biography Family Life Cornelis Mush was the son of Jan Jacobs. Mush, a rich Rotterdam herring merchant, and marriage Cornelist. Maitleaf, a merchant of fishing tackle, and so rich in her own right that she was able to buy the Heerlijkade of Walstorp. Lord of Walstorp was therefore the first aristocratic title Mush was able to use 1635. He later also acquired other lordships, Neoveen 1648, Carnus 1649, and Opvelt and Milestead 1650. He married Elizabeth Katz, a daughter of Grand Pensionary Jacob Katz, on 9 June 1636, when he was 44 and she 17. They had several daughters who married well. One was Elizabeth Maria, who married the unlucky Henry de Fleury de Coulin, better known as Captain Buet, who would lose his head in a treason affair, which bears his name. Her sister Maria Elizabeth married Mathijs Palm. A third daughter, Anna Catharina, married Carol van den Boetselaer, also a prominent regent. Career, Rur. After studying at the Rotterdam Latin School, and late in University 1612, he rounded off his studies with a law degree from the University of Orleans in 1617. In the sequel of the coup debt hit by Stadtholder Morris, Prince of Orange in 1618, which brought about the fall of Johann van Oldenbarnevelt, he enjoyed the patronage of Francis van Arsens, one of the main enemies of Oldenbarnevelt. He became advocate of the States General, to fill a vacancy after the purge of the Oldenbarnevelt adherents. Equally, after the purge of the Rotterdam Virode Schap, he was appointed Griffier secretary of that city in 1619. In 1628, he was appointed Griffier of the States General in the same resolution which appointed his predecessor, Johann van Gogh Thesserier, general treasurer of the Union, April 27. Later historians complain about his long hand which is far less legible than that of Van Gogh. This makes the study of the registers of the States General unduly onerous for the years in which Mush was chief clerk. Besides this important office on the federal level, he also acquired offices on the local level, like Hukheimrod, a member of the governing body of the Polder Dilflan 1643, and Group Belgio of Het Vierige van Staats Vlaanderen, an area in present-day Zeelandic Flanders, 1645. As the salaried official of the States, General Mush was soon able to build an informal position of power. The presidency of the States General rotated weekly, so that presidents hardly had time to get acquainted with affairs before they were already replaced. They tended to lean heavily on the Griffier. Also, in this period, the Grand Pensionaries of Holland who would normally perform a leading role in the affairs of the States General were selected for their incompetence and weakness to protect the power position of the stadtholder Frederick Henry, Prince of Orange. On the other hand, Mush became a favorite of Frederick Henry and helped him manage the States General. Mush also made himself useful to foreign diplomats. King Louis Roman XIII of France acknowledged this, when he created Mush and Ekire Squire in September 1632, on the recommendation of Cardinal Richelieu for services rendered to French diplomacy, i.e., the Dutch government had no secrets for the French one thanks to Mush. When the Franco-Dutch alliance was renewed in 1636, all members of the Commission of the States General who negotiated the treaty received liberal gratuities from the French crown, but Mush received the largest 20,000 livers. Besides state secrets, almost anything was for sale, as far as Mush was concerned. He was accused of altering the resolutions of the States General that he was supposed to enter in the register, presumably for a consideration. He also played a central role in the patronage system of the Republic. Offices and other favors could be obtained from the stadtholder and the States General if Mush received the required consideration. Such practices would be considered corrupt nowadays. In those days, however, 
they might be considered reasonable perks of the office as long as they remained within certain bounds. By common consent, Mush went beyond those bounds, but because he was such an important part of the Orangus regime under Frederick Henry and his son and successor William Roman II, Prince of Orange, Mush managed to get away with it to almost the end of his life. However, he was known to have played an important role during the coup d'etat of William Roman II against the Holland Regents in August 1650. When William suddenly died in October, Mush was exposed to the wrath of the newly resurgent regents, who decided to make an example of him. He was made the subject of an investigation into the coup and of his corrupt practices. This may have convinced him to take his own life on 15 December, though the exact circumstances of his death are unclear. His motivation would have been that a conviction would have brought confiscation of his fortune, which amounted to an estimated two million guilders at his death. Thus, he protected his heirs. After his death, Joost van den Vondel wrote the following satirical epitaph. Graffrift op in Masha, in Masha, in Masha. Higher late de Hofmush new and rot. Sige broite slangen in har pot. Leicesters and duck dalbs jebrode. Zig cheat de vire haid op de hode. De skunst steden op het hooft. Zig scon en et alti lecker hooft. Zig pickton, zonder schrik of shroom. De skunst kursen op den boom. Zig virog na kliwit boog. Clap, knock nip. Zig con den mulek op in stip. Sige vilug de meester van de hand, and spieled met de matched van te land. Sige bursten on een spinnek up, to ail zige dronk, and sprack, dit sop up. Becomp midge zekker night te well, to rest jeeft arson in capel, which amounts to an elaborate play on mush name English, sparrow and how sparrows spoil food and dump on people's heads, while alluding to the fact that important orangists like Van Arsens profited from his corrupt practices.